Hi guys and welcome to another edition of the weekly Wassel Stitch. We're going back to familiar territory with Mudassir joining me on this journey today while he's walking outside as you will hear in some of the voice notes because the wind is very strong but I have no regrets because I think these wonderful conversations with wonderful people is the best thing I could personally ask for. So I want to give you a little bit of an introduction before you go on to the voice notes. Mudassir and I talk about the art and the science of making boundaries. Now, that gets a bit difficult because it really depends on which part of the world you're in, what culture you're in, and that's what we explore, that maybe boundaries in the West are much easier than boundaries in the East. And I also debate about the fact that maybe individuality is the issue here, that we think that it's about us, so everything is about us and the boundaries we create. But he disagrees. He thinks there is more than that. Humans are more complex. I love that we have such differing mindsets, yet we converge every now and then. I completely agree with his concept that humans are very complex. Humans are not that easy, and maybe it is not a one-size-fits-all. But I also, from my lens of my modular thinking that I've built over my years working as a data analyst, I feel like everything can be simplified and then made more complex. And that's the conversation we were having today. And I am very grateful for Mother Sir to share his opinions. I loved the ending of the conversation because he made it so clear of what he thinks and he understands maybe it is not either or. Maybe it is an and and. Maybe we need to be a bit simple yet realize that there is a bit more complex things going on here. So stick around till the end if you want to hear what Mother Sir has to conclude this conversation about. But Without further ado, here's the first voice note. Good evening, Mudassar. I am sending you this message while I'm waiting for the second half of the Netherlands versus Turkey match to continue. It looks like a stressful, stressful time. The Netherlands is losing by one goal. Turkey seems like they're not going to be letting up anytime soon. So I'm scared. <laughs> I am torn because I do not know which country to support. I have had history in both countries, I have lived in both countries, and I am torn, but at, at the moment I live in the Netherlands, so of course my bias is towards supporting the Dutch. So while I wait for this existential crisis to continue for the next 45 minutes, I had this idea that I wanted to share with you, this article that I read about muting people in real life by the art of setting boundaries. Why I found this was interesting was because people sometimes say and they exclaim, I wish life had a mute button because there's just so much information around us and there's so much happening and we're being stretched too thin. And this writer of the article said that in, in some online message, in an online comment, she read someone say that there is a mute button and it, it, it's called boundaries. So if you set proper boundaries, then no one will disturb you and you can regain your focus. In this constant, in this world of constant disruptions and constant interruptions, we forget the very human essence of saying no and trying to build a system which is not easily broken by other people's requests. And they talk about boundaries, and there were a lot of different boundaries. Quite, it's a quite detailed article, so I would really recommend you or, or also our readers to read it if they are really interested in understanding the elements of it. But there are a lot of boundaries. There are familial boundaries, economic boundaries, intellectual boundaries, personal boundaries, emotional boundaries. Financial boundaries, like it doesn't stop, right? So, to an extent, it sounds also very systemic and funny that okay, everything is a boundary, so nothing is a boundary. But the heart of the problem was very interesting. The heart of the message was very interesting because it talks about how you can regain control of your life if you just set some boundaries and give yourself some space. Because a lot of times we live like we're on autopilot. We're not conscious because we're getting pulled through life. Life is happening to us instead of we're happening to life. And a lot of times people are not conscious of what they're doing because they're running from one thing to the other to the other. When you set boundaries, when you give yourself some space to think, to be intentional, I think it really, really helps. And that is the part of this article that I agree with because I really think it's important to be aware of what you're doing. I don't necessarily think you need to have boundaries in every single element, but I do respect boundaries and I do agree with them, especially in the context of work where people just keep asking for favors or friends who just keep taking up your time and headspace but you don't get something to yourself. So there are quite a few good examples. I want to ask you first how you think about the article, anything that stood out for you that you want to talk about 
And what do you think about boundaries in general? Do you think would they add value to your life if you were to implement them? Do you already implement them? What are the results? I am quite curious to hear what you say. Just when I thought yeah, this whole football reference would be leading to you connecting it with the topic, you, you ended up uh, talking about how you're confused between supporting those teams. So I don't even know where to side with you in, in that area. So I hope the best team wins. Uh, and since you're living in Netherlands, I think you should be supporting it, although they're losing at this time. Um, so coming to the topic, uh, boundaries, I think, is a very important topic, especially coming from this part of the world where uh, we have bigger families than what you see in uh, Europe or the US. So it's very, very important to understand uh, to say no, like you said. Um, and just not the, the things that have been mentioned here, I think it goes beyond that. Uh, there, there are a lot of times where I have experienced how people keep asking you for favors and people keep relying on you like um, you're going to do something which might not be your responsibility per se, but since they've somehow established the fact that uh, you'll be helping them out and you keep doing it again and again, you don't know where, where to say no because wherever you want to say no, you have this whole guilt trip of not helping out some someone who actually needs help and something that you're good at. So I think um, the one thing that I've learned about boundaries is the fact that uh, it, it's, it's about taking a step back when you're feeling uncomfortable and there's always this tick that uh, hits your brain when you, your brain does know that you're uh, you're going to do something which you're not totally comfortable with and maybe you shouldn't be doing. And in some extreme cases, uh, people don't even realize that because that, uh, that tick which I'm talking about, that has gone so far behind the, the subconscious brain that they don't even notice it anymore. So I think um, it's the first time of saying no is always hard. The second time you say it, it gets a little bit easier. I know it's still very, very hard because uh, learning things is a, is a big uh, trait and not very easy to learn and it, it takes a long time sometimes. Um, I have taken my sh share of time of learning it and I think I'm still learning it. Um, there are times where I struggle to say no, but the more I've said it, I think the more okay and the more comfortable I've become to saying no to things. Although uh, sometimes even I don't understand in areas which are uh, probably not as uh, uh, as conclusive as they might seem from the outside, but when you're in that situation, um, and again, the higher relationships uh, involve about giving and taking, and sometimes it can get really complicated. So I, I do struggle in those areas, and I would love to know what you think about uh, when the boundary itself gets very, uh, the, the topic of boundary actually gets very uh, thin and you don't understand whether or not this actually should be the boundary or not. This is the area which I think I still struggle with and I would love to know your opinion. I really loved what you said in the start and I do want to talk about it so I'm just spinning it here uh, before I answer your question first and then move on to the topic and the topic was about um, the difference between the two worlds of extended family and nuclear family and I do want to pin a little bit about the Dutch culture versus the Pakistani culture and I think there's a lot that I want to talk about there but first I want to answer your question that the line just gets so thin and you don't know you don't know about okay is this is this really the boundary or where am I in this line and I think it really boils down to how you perceive the relationship for me communication is very important as I said before so it's really really important for me to be very clear of what I want and I don't want so for me, sometimes I do struggle, and of course this is a bias in my head, when people are not able to communicate what they want. They're not able to communicate their boundaries. So the question that you are saying, I might not be the right person to answer it because for me it's very clear. When I want to help someone out, I want to help someone out. When I don't want to help someone out, I feel it. And when I feel it, I either do it because it's out of guilt, but that is a different topic than what you said, right? That, that is when you know it's in your head. But the question about where you don't know the line is, that doesn't happen to me because I know very clearly that, okay, this is me doing a favor that I want to do or this is me doing a favor that I don't want to do. And uh, the only thing I can advise 
and, and take this with a big pinch of salt because as I said, I am not the right person to know this either, is ask yourself if you want to, if you'd be on the other side, would this be the person you would call? And you said relationships are based on uh, give and take or you don't agree or agree with it. I genuinely believe all relationships are give and take, no matter what relationship you're in, right? So if you do this exercise of putting yourself in the other person's place, like, can I get something out of this person? Would I ever ask this person for a favor? And if the answer is yes, then I think you should oblige as well, because that means you might need that person in the future. You too think they're valuable enough to keep in your life, and then it's quid pro quo sometimes. But if that person is not really adding any value to your life and they're just taking and taking and you're like, you're exhausted, but you don't know where to stop the line. I think this is a really good like checkpoint to feel about it. That, hey, I don't want to say no to this person because I'm a nice guy, but does this person really add value to my life? If I had to ask them for something, what would it be? And if nothing comes up in your mind, then maybe it's time to draw that boundary and be like, yeah, I don't think I'm getting too much out of the relationship. And I know I'm really like rationalizing and, uh, quantifying relationships here but at the end of the day that's what it is and that's what i want to take this as a bridge to the topic that i wanted to also add on a little bit about about the difference between these two cultures uh, the dutch and the, and the pakistani and the extended family and family the reason extended family asks you for a lot of favors and uh, they trust you and everything is because it's a good pro because family always stands you know blood is always thicker than than water all those sayings mean that family will be there if you need it that's why if family asks you to do something you do it because you're like you know what when i need something they're going to be standing and that's that's what I also believe. And that's what I've been lacking. And I feel like I'm lacking here in the Netherlands because the Dutch people are so simple minded. And I don't mean that as a insult. I mean that as a compliment that they don't let these complications of emotions and complications of, of, of drama to an extent, if we want to say it in, in our, in our culture, get to them. They just say, if I don't want it, it's a no. If I want it, it's a yes. Be it their parents, be it their children, be it their brothers or sisters. It doesn't matter. If they don't feel like doing anything, they'll be very clear with it. And no one takes offense to it. When you come to the Netherlands, the first thing they teach you is that don't feel offended if they're too direct, because you are too direct. So they're very good at clearing, creating the boundaries. But after living here five years, I've realized that, you know, maybe I'm not that into this. As I said from the start of this conversation, that I know what I want and I don't want. And that doesn't mean I don't want to do it. Sometimes I don't want it, but I yet do it because I feel like this is a relationship. You invest. Sometimes... You don't want to walk 15,000 steps, which you do, right? Sometimes you don't, sometimes you want to eat sugar at 11 in the night, but you don't do it, right? Some things in life that are undesirable are still important to you and healthy for you. So I feel like here as well, relationships are very healthy for you and they're very important for you. But I feel like, again, <laughs> and you and I always do this a lot, but we converge to something, right? And for me, the conversion is going now back to individuality that we've made the individual such a central part of our narrative right now that it all comes down to me now. Right? So like, Anwar, what do you, what do you think? Do you want to do this or not? But that's not the reality. You are but a web of people around you, right? There are other people depending on it. There are people you depend on. There is a whole mix of things that are happening. So it's not just that easy to say that in isolation, what do I feel? No, it's about how you play that role that has been given to you in life or that you have assumed in life. So it is more than that. So even if I don't want to help out this person, but they're a friend and they need it and they're saying that, I need this help. I think I could really use your help at this time and I feel like I don't want to help them out. I'm like, are they my friend? Do they have a place in my life? If, I, if yes is the answer to both of them, even if I don't want to help, even if I don't feel like helping, I'm like, it's okay. I will take out time for them because those are the important things in life, Mother Sir. And that's, that's what I really think about this element of having those lines blurred and not knowing if you want to help or not. It all boils down to Yes, I get it. You're a nuclear family in the Netherlands, in Europe. You're nuclear and you're not extended. And you feel like it's all about the individual. I was in this podcast right now with a, a, another guest and he kept saying the nuclear family structure is being broken. And I asked him, but why do you care about the nuclear family structure? He was talking about individuality and the whole LGBTQ thing. And I said, why is this nuclear family so important? He's like, the nuclear family is the fundamental part of being human. I'm like, but that's not true. <laughs> because before nuclear family, we had extended family, which got broken by nuclear family. Before extended family, we had tribal families, which got broken by extended family. So we have been slowly, slowly chipping away at, at the thing that makes us human, which is our tribe. From tribe, we went to extended family. From extended family, we went to close family or nuclear family. And now we're going into the individual. But this last step is a bit more difficult now because we are not designed to be alone. And all these things that I hear and read about make your boundaries and everything sometimes feels like you're trying to be a sole decision maker of your life. 
and you're not, frankly. Yes, saying no to a coworker who tries to dump extra work on you or saying no to a friend who takes advantage of you every single time is something else than giving a little bit leeway to your partner or to your friends or to your coworker, who you like, who you enjoy having a relationship with, and you feel like, okay, it's a give and take because that's what relationships are. So that's what I really wanted to talk about. I think this voice went a bit longer than the first two, but that is how it starts. So I do want to hear your opinion on it. I think this was an interesting take on individuality and we do want to bring it back to boundaries, but I do like where this is going, but feel free to bring the conversation back if you feel like talking more intensely about boundaries per se, but we will touch upon that. However, I really would like to also hear your opinion on what I just said. I think your point about putting yourself in the other person's shoes and imagining a situation where you would want some help from them or similar kind of help, would they oblige or not? That does make sense. And in a lot of situation, you could actually calculate that, but there are times where this give and take in relationships is not exactly quantifiable. Sometimes what you're getting in return isn't exactly the same. And sometimes you could even argue because of uh, the situation of uh, yours and the other person's and the privilege that you share and what they share, it could be vastly different. What you could provide isn't exactly something that you might get in return. And sometimes you do it because what you get in return is something that you value more or um, some, sometimes you're just doing it out of um, maybe empathy. So I think these kind of situations are very complicated because humans in general are very complicated. Um, this is why I sometimes don't understand where that boundary should be uh, because it, again, the situation and the complexity of humans makes it very hard to understand that boundary. I do think, uh, on the other hand, that uh, understanding your emotions uh, plays a huge part because one thing that I've learned in therapy and what I've read online is that um, sometimes you just have to listen to your emotions. If you're not comfortable with something, there will be a signal. So I think a deeper understanding and sometimes even professional help would help you in this regard. Um, and coming to the, the question about the family system that you were talking about, how uh, we've been cutting down on it and maybe we've come a little too far. But I think my answer again would be very similar because, okay, th there's another side of it that, that is uh, related to the societal and cultural thing. But again, because humans are very complicated, sometimes you do require a family that supports you, not um, just a partner with you. Sometimes you don't even have that partner. So. Uh, yeah, uh, this is true that uh, getting that independence and having to make your own decisions is a huge luxury, but you are foregoing something. But again, because what humans want and what our needs are is so complicated that uh, whatever decision you make, the opportunity cost is still very huge. So in a perfect world, I would assume that everyone that you're living with or even if you're staying in a family, a nuclear family or a joint family, um, everyone perfectly understands boundary. And I think empathy over here requires, uh, having empathy actually is very, very important because um, when you're sharing um, space with someone, when you're sharing your life with someone in whatever way, it could be your um, partner or it could just be your family or friends, it requires a great deal of empathy because there are uh, a lot of situations where uh, the boundary that we're talking about is uh, very thin and you don't understand sometimes where whether you're crossing it or not because you're sharing so much of uh, so many things together you probably don't understand that so i think uh, there's no one answer no perfect way to solve that but i do think um, that people should be more willing to uh, not go with what the society is saying and uh, should focus on what they would want. I think um, getting back to the drawing board is very important. I know it's easier said than done because all the family system and the way of living has uh, evolved to the point where it 
actually depends more on the country that you're living in. In a country like Pakistan, living alone or uh, getting out of your parents' house sometimes gets very complicated. So I think that does matter a lot. But if we're somehow uh, willing to get to the drawing board and willing to understand each other's boundaries and preferences and compromises, that could go a long way. That could help understand the boundary and could make our lives a lot better. I really and en- really enjoyed what you said, but I'm also a bit skeptical, and I would love to challenge you if you allow me, uh, because you know what I try to do, right? I don't like when everything comes down to it's difficult, it's complicated, it's more than that. I agree, life is messy, humans are messy, everything is messy, but that's not, in my opinion, a sufficient answer, right? When I gave you the very simple answer of, of you know what look at this, does this relationship bring value to you? I am oversimplifying it, but I'm oversimplifying it for a reason because under information is better than over information. And in, and in regards to the explanation that I heard from you, the edge cases you kept uh, touching upon, it makes sense to me quite easily why you don't know where the line is because you are so overcomplicatedly involved in every single edge case. Sometimes it's better, maybe it's the software background of mine, because I, I work in data a lot. So it's always about, you know what, there's a huge, view, huge model you need to make, which is going to be complicated. It's going to have a lot of moving parts. But what do we do first? We just take the most simple thing, make that first, and then build upon it. So that's what I do. I make one very simple logic first in how I treat my fellow humans in terms of my boundaries. And then I start adding some use case to it. Okay, some edge case that, okay, this is good, but what do I do in this case? No, it doesn't matter to me. Let's move on to the next one. And Instead of taking everything and dealing with them one by one, you build something very small and that should cover 80%, 70% of your cases. That will already give you a lot of bandwidth now because you won't be overwhelmed by not knowing where the line is. And then from there, you start adding some edge cases like, okay, what is my economic boundary? What is my financial boundary? What is my intellectual boundary? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because what my concern usually is in general with humanity as a whole, it's something I've really been obsessed with right now. Like these days is the lack of awareness that comes and i'm not saying that it's you i'm just saying in general the lack of awareness that is about how much the environment is affecting us in the ways we don't even know the amount of over information and overwhelmingness that comes from the society around us it could be as you say societal pressures it could be uh, cultural engineering of sort just making us believe something is good and and it's an example of what you're saying right you want to come back to the drawing board. Why? Because you want to see what works for you. So you're also making that individualistic uh, argument, right? You, you're saying, let's go back and let's redraw society in a way that helps you, the individual, like it helps you. But as I said, for me, it's an oxymoron of sort because you cannot exist without society. And no matter how much we want to believe it, no matter how we can uh, find those edge cases, if it's, there's a healthy functioning society, some individuals can profit off it by not partaking in society and just taking the benefits. Those are the the ba- the the free bandwagoners or something like this. There's a word for it, right? But if you break apart the fabric of society and let everyone just be an individual for themselves, it will not be sustainable. It will just go back to becoming clusters of people who just trust each other and they start building society from there again. So I don't think it's as easy as saying just redrawing the boundaries i think it's also about you as a human understanding the limitations of your individuality and when it comes to boundaries like the ones that you're reading and to be really honest with you i think i've already said this once i've never thought there were so many boundaries and again i think that's over engineering of sort that you want to have emotional boundaries you want to have personal boundaries you want to have economic boundaries you want to have financial boundaries you want to have uh, intellectual boundaries you want to have idealist ideological boundaries you want to have belief boundaries you can't have every like it cannot exist these boundaries can, it is not functioning for you to think that you're going to have so many boundaries because no one will want to be with you if every single time they're pushed back because they're challenging one thing that you're not comfortable with them challenging because you're like, this is my boundary. Sometimes relationships take precedence and sometimes you have to give, as I said, because you will be taking, so you'll be giving. And naturally, naturally, of course, you don't want to go into a place where there are no boundaries and everything is up for grabs. And then you feel like, again, overwhelmed on the other side of the aisle that there's too much happening. I don't know where I can draw my line. So I do genuinely believe lines are good and lines are important, but I do also want to really stress the fact that, hey, boundaries are as good as the structure of society you want to build around it, right? 
So in countries like Pakistan, such boundaries don't exist much. Our parents don't care much because it's not normal for them. And their building healthy boundaries is is a good example of having the best of both worlds in my head. That hey, look, I am still with my mom and dad. I am still with my brothers and sisters. I am having that loving world of of family around me, my cousins and my uncles and my aunts. But I also make sure that I can tell them, hey, look, these are my boundaries, and they might not get it in the start, but slowly, slowly they're gonna get it. But that's to the extent of what I want to go for personally. Because the other way around, it's like you have a very fragmented society like in, in, in the Western world where you're not that close with each other around you. Again, it's not not like an assumption of every single person living here, just a, a general general aggregate uh, statistic of sort that people feel more lonely here. They feel more individualistic here. They feel like they cannot reach out to people when they want to talk to someone. All of this has happened because people have made, made too many boundaries. It's too many walls now. It's too much about themselves. So I really feel like here also a healthy middle ground is needed. And that healthy middle ground in my head comes down to simply understanding the value of the relationship you're trying to build a boundary with. So it's not just about you. It's not as simple as saying, hey, what are my boundaries? I want to explore them. But what is my boundary to this person next to me? And I think that would make life a little bit more easier. But that's just my opinion. So I want to hear your closing thoughts. Uh, and then we send this over to production. So I am quite excited to hear what you have to say and we can close off this conversation. I love how so many of our debates just boil down to absurdism versus essentialism. Uh, you being on the essentialism side and trying to simplify things and me being the one who tells you that oh, everything is complicated. And I think I still stick to that while I do agree that your arguments certainly have merit to it. Um, I think when we overcomplicate things sometimes, we lose sight of what we're going to and um, trying to achieve something, we just, like, like, like I said, going to the drawing board, we keep trying to overcomplicate things and not coming to the solution while sometimes are doing the way you do things and trying to find a simple answer that leads to a result and um, sometimes that is more helpful. But I think especially in this case where we're talking about humans and their psychology, I think it's very important to look at the bigger picture and I still believe the fact that humans are complicated. Different things do work for different people. Um, I also think that uh, just like how you mentioned about moving into different family structures, how we were into tribes and then went to joint families and then now nuclear families and now even further than that, we're going into independent lives. So while we were like living in those situations, while we were living in the harsh times like slavery, while we were living in times where women didn't have their rights and stuff like that, um, sometimes huge goals like um, living in a world where even the smallest of details would be uh, looked into. It was a very far dream and right now that we're talking about it, it's a conversation that has, has a huge value. So I think um, these problems are already there. I agree to the fact that sometimes when we're trying to solve a huge problem and probably uh, culture does play a role. This is where I actually do agree with you because sometimes trying to take on the culture head on is not possible. Like talking about um, complete independence in a country like Pakistan where uh, families do want strong ties unless uh, you're, you're doing something like um, just this what you did moving abroad where you just have to be independent. That is probably the not, I wouldn't say only solution, but that is one of the easiest way um, to be completely independent. So I think uh, I agree that even if we're going to the drawing board, there needs to be smaller steps that we need to take. But I still feel that um, establishing boundaries is something that we should all um, constantly try to evaluate and it's important how we should have conversations with each other. And if we do have those conversations, we would know that what kind of boundary the other person wants and what, the, what are the boundaries that we want. Sometimes people don't match. Even if you're not talking about your parents, your siblings, or even your partner, um, sometimes you 
might just have boundaries that are not um, feasible enough to probably live together or have the same terms that you currently do. So I think um, there is no one size fit all. Uh, sometimes your idea of uh, still not going too far away and having everything, uh, having a boundary for every little thing is the answer is probably the correct answer and it might work for a lot of people but I still believe that humans being complicated requires uh, understanding each other and first of all knowing yourself because if you don't know yourself you won't be able to express what boundaries you have and what boundaries are you okay with because it works both ways so I think um, there's the answer is always in the middle that's what I always say and uh, probably in this conversation as well, uh, most people would uh, think that the answer is somewhere in the middle. Where that line is and where the middle is, uh, is ob obviously open to interpretation. And some people might uh, side with your side of the argument more and some uh, would side with mine. But that's the beauty of these conversations. There is no right answer. And that was it. Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Melissa. I had a lot of fun trying to understand more about this issue and this was nothing but an amazing important debate and discussion. I hope you get to have fun as much as I did and catch you here next time.